Hey guys, Static Save from Ace 5 Studios, and today we're going to be looking at subsurface scattering. This is Materials 104. Make sure to check out my other tutorials if you haven't yet. I got a whole series of materials going on. And in this lesson, uh, we're going to be talking about subsurface scattering. So, as you can see, like for comparison with this model, this is with subsurface scattering, this is without. As you can see, this one looks much more like a plastic doll, and this one looks like it's actually like fleshy, like it has this warm tint to it. And it's not just a tint, it's like, uh, basically what we're simulating in 3D is this effect. When you put your hand over some light object, you get, um, you know, it shines through. It's not just, it doesn't completely block out the light, like it's not black because the light on it actually travels through the particle. I mean, through the object. So let's do this here to make it more obvious. Let's hide the hair and let's get rid of this background sky. It's a bit distracting. And now render lights. Let's turn off the key light. So we just, because right now, if we hit render right now, let's make this render region a bit smaller. So we're not rendering too much here. So let's turn off our key light. We just have our rim light. So this is what it looks like right now with the backlight. Now let's go to our skin texture. We put in the luminance channel. Initially just right, lights everything up. Texture and effects and subsurface scattering. Now by default, oops, it gives this kind of effect, which isn't very handy. Because the important thing to adjust first is the path length. Right now it travels through 10 centimeters of mesh. Um, in this case, it's probably more like one centimeter. As you now we're getting this nice kind of candle wax look, maybe even half a centimeter. There you go, this is much more nice. And since it's skin, uh, the inside of skin is usually red because it's full of blood and stuff. So you're gonna wanna go for a more fleshy color like this. And there you go, look, brilliant. And we have subsurface scattering going on. And this is the core concept. Uh, I would also maybe turn down the brightness a bit here. Just to be able, because otherwise it's a bit too intense. Depends what kind of effect you're going for, but this is how you tweak it. And you can obviously change the color to something blue, but then it's not going to be much like skin. But it's still pretty fancy. Um, and then we can turn the key light back on. So we actually have a little image from that side. Let's make this back to our red and drag it down a bit. And there you go. Now we have a nice kind of waxy, well, not waxy, but it, it feels much softer than it was before. And we can turn the hair back on and we can, as you can see, it's a much nicer, softer effect. And that's what subsurface scattering does. Um, now let's have a look at Fresnel and why we want to use it. Fresnel, for example, on the hair, I'm not sure if I'm not using it. Oh, I am using it here, of course. I use it in most places. Basically, the effect is that if you have, let's say, a sphere, uh, sphere, yeah. Here we go. It's our sphere. If we apply our hair material to it, um, you will see that right now it's pretty subtle, but if we change this color here to let's say pink, you'll see it's pink on the outside and it's yellow on the inside because it depends what camera angle you're looking at. See like the sharp edges get the, that, the color on the left and front on angles. And you can use this to control lots of things like reflection and you know, you, you'll notice obviously in the previous tutorial you saw that I put Fresnel into reflection channel. Because there it goes black basically, mean, white means strong reflection and black means no reflection. So you only get the strong reflection on the edges. Because in real life, if you find like a wooden floor or something or you know, some tiles, if you look straight down at it, it won't be that reflective. Like you can't see your reflection. But if you look down at a mirror on, a, on an angle, you will see your reflection. I mean, you will see the reflection of windows and stuff. Like here is a picture of a wooden floor, for example, and you can see that when you're looking at a at a low angle, when you're you know you're far away from it, you can see the reflection of the of the window there. But as you go closer, as it goes, as you're looking more vertically down, you see the reflection blurs out, and you can't really see it anymore. And that's how you use Fresnel. You know, that's like basically that. This is a Fresnel shader, in you know less ref, less strong reflection and less sharp. So for hair, I do that to also emphasize the you know 
just to make it less boring because otherwise if it's just yellow it's like yeah but if you add a bit of like you can also do this with with paint shit with car shaders and stuff and it just adds this nice little kind of make it totally white but it's a bit too strong but that's the effect that you know you're going for this highlights around the edges kind of look and also this is important with cloth and silk for example um for example here i have the cloth which is just you know a simple color with reflectance but if I go into the channel and I add Fresnel here, um, you'll see that it straight away gets these nice little white highlights on it. And you can control which colors these are, obviously, because it's Fresnel. So you can grab your, let's drag some purple in here, maybe a bit darker. And in this one, just drag a new one in here and make it more intense. Make it more even towards blue. And possibly even get some Fresnel or something in here, I don't know. Lighten it up. Then you get those nice little highlights. And you can also drag these closer to each other. And you get these kind of highlights along the edges. You can even sharpen it up. and So you have this very strong effect. And so that's how kind of how you go towards making some kind of silk materials. You use Fresnel. You can also use it in the luminance channel if you want. You know, that works too. So luminance is just as good for Fresnel. Get some Fresnel there, and just the black will mean no luminance. And this one, let's make it pink. And there you go. We have a nice kind. Of, there we go. That's a nice kind of silky material. Add some noise to it, and it'll be sweet. And you can obviously control with the brightness slider here. If you to turn this brightness, this color thing to black, the top, then you can blend it in. And, you know, so the effect is a bit subtler and not so strong and maybe too subtle. And there you go, and you get nice, nice effects. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is inverse AO. It's basically the ambient occlusion effect. So um, effects, ambient occlusion, again, the luminance channel. And you tick the inverse, invert direction button. And now when you render, you can see you're getting kind of a similar effect. So if we switch this guy to something much more orange again, you can see you're getting a bit of this gray and you can pull this orange guy across and then you get more of the shine through. So you get a very similar effect, it renders faster. It's not always as accurate, but it is like if you don't want this part to be orange, you can just drag the black over across a bit and the black will see and then it's darker. But it is very, you know, it's a very, and it's faster and it's kind of more intuitive maybe since so you get this kind of nice candle effect. Um, maybe it's too light. And this is a very, but still you get a nice kind of glowing backlit effect. So yeah, this is the third kind of, I feel like all these things are connected together, the Fresnel and the, and the subsurface scattering in this inverse AO is kind of like a very important thing. And then you can turn the key light on back, obviously, and the hair and, you know, and you still get this nice kind of shader. It's much, it's nice and soft, it renders quickly. So yeah, that's pretty much summarizes it. Um, don't forget, these are rigged characters. You can find them on Ace5 Studios forward slash 5J. Um, there's also five man characters, all kinds of other stuff as you can see. And if you have any questions, just message me, you know, leave me a comment and I'll try and get back to you. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. This was Alexei from Ace5 Studios. Have a good one.